hands in. He loves living here. He loves talking to us and getting to know people and hearing what impacts our local Kansans. And I cannot wait for him to take over, or at least win the election, in 17 days so that I can call him our soon-to-be governor, Derek Schmidt. Please come on up and talk to our crowd. We love you. Well, good afternoon. Patriotic Kansans, thank you so much for taking your time to come out and be part of this. It is how our democracy works because we the people ultimately decide the direction of this state and of this country. You know, in the course of this race, I have spent a lot of time out visiting with Kansans all over our state. People that think like we do, people who think differently, all people who love our state, and I've noticed something. I've noticed that in recent months and years, there are more Kansans who say to me that they are genuinely worried about the direction and future of our country and our state than I have ever heard say that before. I believe that a large part of why that is so is this mentality, this big government socialist mentality that has taken over the instruments of power in Washington, D.C., has this country headed in a direction that is simply not right for so many of us in Kansas. So we've got a Biden Democrat who has that philosophy in the White House. And we got a Biden Democrat who has that philosophy leading the U.S. House of Representatives and Nancy Pelosi. And we've got another Biden Democrat who has that same philosophy over in the U.S. Senate in Chuck Schumer. The folks here in Kansas, we also have a Biden Democrat on the second floor of this building behind me in the governor's office who has that same philosophy. And that is why I am so proud to be here with you today to say we have 17 days until together we can fire Laura Kelly. Look, you don't have to take my word for it that she's got that same Biden Democrat philosophy. We had a debate just a couple of weeks ago over in Johnson County. We were on a stage together. And I had a chance to ask her a question, so I did. I said, Laura, do you really believe that America and Kansas are better off today because Joe Biden is in the White House? And do you know what she said? She said, I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> Friends, that tells us all we need to know. Truth of the matter is, we have a governor who knows she is out of step with most of the people of Kansas. She knows her free choice to be a Democrat, to associate with that crowd in Washington, to have those same big government socialist ideas, that doesn't square with Kansas patriots. But she doesn't want folks to figure out that's what she's about, at least not for 17 more days. So our mission together over the course of the remaining time in this race, not only for governor, but for more conservative leadership up and down the ballot, our mission is to make sure we remind Kansans of the errors that this leadership team has made over the past four years that they have to be held accountable for and that there are better options on the ballot. It's that simple. So we have to remind Kansans of the decision made by this Biden Democrat philosophy that thought it was okay to shut down churches under penalty of criminal prosecution on Easter Sunday, no less, until a federal judge said you can't do that. We have to remind them of that same Biden Democrat philosophy that thought it was a good idea to lock our children out of school and to try to keep them out, not just through the summer, but into the fall, and then not stand up when in some parts of the state they were kept out in some cases for over a year. Folks, the amount of damage that was done to so many of our children by that ill-conceived decision to lock them out of their classrooms and keep them isolated from their peers is immeasurable. But we can see it already in the data. Suicidal thoughts are up. Something like one in three of our teenage kids have seriously considered taking their own lives since this all began, far above previous numbers. Mental health interventions for our kids are up. 
behavioral issues for our kids going back to school, especially the youngest ones who weren't there as kindergartners or first graders and are having trouble adapting as older kids. Behavioral issues up, academic performance is down. Some 15,000 kids have left our public school system in part because so many parents said, we're not going to wait, we've got to go do something better for our kid right now while this all gets righted. And good teachers are leaving the profession in droves because they cannot take so much of this any longer. Friends, that is not a record of an education governor, despite what they may say. That is a record of failing our children. And we have to hold this governor accountable for that. And by the way, this is not just a history lesson. It's ongoing until today. In fact, just, I think it was two weeks ago, our governor was asked, uh, do you think that was all a mistake? And you know what she said? She said she makes absolutely no apologies for those decisions, even knowing what we know now. That same Biden Democrat philosophy thought it was a good idea to declare that your small business that you've worked for and sweated for and maybe had in the family for generations, you are non-essential. So the government shut you down but left your big box competitor across the street wide open. There were 157,000 Kansans who were thrown out of work in three short months, March, April, and May, in the spring of 20, uh, 2020, by one person's decision. Would have gone on longer, but Republicans in the legislature stepped up and said you can't do that anymore. 157,000 Kansans thrown out of work. And this is not just history. Kansas lags most other states in recovering those lockdown destroyed jobs. Last I checked, we were ranked 44th among the states. Only about 81% of those jobs back. It is ongoing in our state. And by the way, maybe some of you were in this situation, I don't know. After throwing so many Kansans out of work, and many were entitled to and needed unemployment benefits to feed their families, make a car payment, make a house payment, because they weren't allowed to work, this governor's Department of Labor failed miserably. Not only did they lose more than 450 million of our public dollars to crooks and fraudsters, but an awful lot of our friends and neighbors who were in need, they couldn't even get their government to answer their phone calls or their emails to get them help at a time, in some cases, of desperation. Kansas can do so much better than this misguided philosophy. And don't forget the vetoes. It's not just about the important mechanical issues and financial issues, although it is about those things. Don't forget the vetoes. This governor vetoed more than 20 tax cuts, including vetoing the food sales tax cut. If she just would have signed the bill in 2019 when Republicans put it on her desk, our grocery tax today in the middle of this inflation would be half what it currently is on its way to zero in January. But instead she vetoed it and held that issue until this re-election year. If she just would have signed the bill on mental health assistance, which she vetoed, maybe Kansas wouldn't be ranked at or near the bottom in the most recent data in terms of making available and affordable mental health services to our citizens who are in need. And as was already mentioned, don't forget, not once, but twice, this governor vetoed the common sense measure. It is not Republican or Democrat. It's not even conservative or liberal, rural or urban. The common sense proposition that people who are biologically male should not be allowed to compete in sports that are reserved for female athletes. It just makes sense, and this governor vetoed it twice. We will sign it into law in the first days of the new administration with your help. She vetoed good Second Amendment legislation. In fact, this governor that talks about being so bipartisan has vetoed more bills sent to her by Republicans in the legislature than any other governor, at least in the modern history of the state of Kansas. Folks, we can do so much better. So this election is about choosing. It's about choosing which path we are going to follow as a state going forward. Do we want four more years of that big government, Biden-Democrat philosophy that trusts government and bureaucrats first? Or do we want to change paths, have Republican leadership that instead trusts Kansans first 
and that says we can do so much better if you will just let the people lead on many of these issues. Look, the same folks that did everything I just described over the last four years and brought us the highest gasoline prices in a generation at least, and brought us the highest inflation in 40 years, making it so hard for so many Kansas families to pay their bills day in and day out. The same people that did all of that, they want Kansans votes again. But we have a better choice. We can choose Republican leadership that will wake up every single day and say, we're sure not gonna repeat those errors. And we're going to ask ourselves today, what can we do to make Kansans daily lives more affordable? The same folks who locked our kids out of the schools and did so much damage to so many children. They want Kansans votes again. But we can tell our friends and our neighbors and all who will listen, there is a better choice. We can have Republican leadership that instead will wake up every day and say, how today can we best put our kids and parents first in educating the next generation? And the same Biden Democrats who walked away from the southern border of the United States and who turned a blind eye on requests from the border states for assistance to deal with the consequences of the open border. When our governor was asked for help by the governors of Texas and Arizona, she didn't just say no. She called their request a political game. Friends, it is neither political nor is it a game to try to help contain and prevent from coming to Kansas so much of what comes across the border under the guise of humanity but it allows the cartels for example to smuggle into our country and distribute in our state including right here in topeka record amounts of fentanyl it's not just a drug it's a poison it kills on average one kansan every day who overdoses that's not a political game that is part of the job of the governor of the state of kansas to look out for the health and the welfare of our citizens the same people who had the philosophy that invited that in, they want Kansans votes again. Or we can tell our friends and neighbors and all who will listen that there is a better choice. We can have Republican leadership that will wake up every day and say, how do we make our communities safer? And how do we stand solidly behind the men and the women who serve honorably in law enforcement to answer the call at 2 a.m. when someone is at the door and you or I are in need? The choices in these races, up and down the ballot, are stark. This is a race about one direction or another. I am proud to be the nominee of the Republican Party for governor. I am proud to stand here with nominees of the Republican Party up and down the ballot. And we are asking for your help, your vote, but also your help in spreading the word so that Kansans understand what is at stake and they can help us right this ship. We need your vote. We need your yard to put out a sign, invite the conversation. Show up on election day, take 10 friends with you. Make sure they're like-minded friends, that'd be a good thing. It's a time for choosing in Kansas. It is a choice that all Kansans, including those who are patriots, will make together. We can do this, God bless you, let's get it done.